on YouTube uh, for others to watch. So, but thanks for everyone for being here. And the recording is, should be on now. All right. So why don't we start with introductions? And um, <clears throat> I'll let me introduce myself and then we'll introduce our uh, co-presenter. Um, I'm Dr. Tahita Bronner. I'm your naturopathic doctor and I practice natural holistic medicine. So I have um, over 40 years of experience in healthcare. I started my uh, career out over um, 40, uh, 40 years ago as a cardiovascular ICU nurse um, back in the 1980s. And most recently I obtained my four year doctorate in naturopathic medicine, graduating magna cum laude uh, over seven years ago from the University of Bridgeport College of Naturopathic Medicine in Connecticut. Uh, so previously uh, I've been teaching uh, health and wellness classes by invitation only uh, to a smaller group of sisters. But for this year in 2021, uh, we have branched out using our new Facebook group and other social media platforms to reach larger audiences. So we're so glad that you joined our group and we hope that all the information that we share on a daily basis is helpful to you. And um, we've, we've grown so fast in less than in two months, uh, we have over th uh, almost 350 people in the group. And so we wanna thank you. Thank you for inviting your friends and keep doing that. Let's keep growing and sharing information um, to help us to stay healthy. And so um, today uh, we're gonna talk about holistic ways to boost your immune system naturally, which is so important um, as we live in this age of COVID, we need to understand that there's so much more that we can do to protect ourselves from getting sick from COVID besides just feeling like, well, we just have to take the vaccine and there's nothing else that we can do. Well, there's plenty of things that we can do and should do to protect ourselves. Um, there's always alternatives. So that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today is what those alternatives are to taking a vaccine. Of course, it's your personal choice whether you decide to take it or not, but the objective of this meeting is to make an informed decision for yourself about your own health. So one thing my father always taught me years ago was to, he would always say, be your own woman, use your own mind and don't let anyone dictate to you. And I've actually lived by that wisdom all of my life. I always make my own decisions for myself, uh, informed decisions based on the information that I've uh, that has been provided to me or that I've researched on my own and, and come to my own conclusion. So, um, but before we get started, I'm happy to have a co-presenter with me today and I'd like for her to introduce herself, Denise. <coughs> Yes, peace and blessings, everyone. I am Denise Renee Muhammad. I'm a certified aromatherapist, author, wellness coach. I'm a mother of four children. I live here in Houston, <clears throat> excuse me, in Houston, Texas. And um, I have over 10 years of experience in the health and wellness industry. I've been in different, um, you know, business opportunity, entrepreneurial opportunities in health and wellness and um, just I got into it you know due to my own health challenges you know trying to better myself and as I learn and grow I love educating and sharing the information with others um, so I went into a deeper study of aromatherapy to you know just learn exactly what it is and how it interacts with our bodies. So I'm happy to be here. And I thank you, Dr. Bronner, for allowing me to um, co-host this with you today. And thank you for accepting the invitation. So uh, every month we, uh, 
we want to please put yourselves on mute and uh, after the meeting we'll unmute ourselves and we'll have an open discussion but if you missed the beginning of the uh the introduction we would like for uh you to use the chat box if you want to ask questions or comments. And then you want to ask questions or comments. Um, I'm going to try and turn you off, Regina. I think that's you. I'm going to try. Okay, I just put you on mute. All right. That's good. I can't hear you. Um, but I got off the phone. It was on the pad and the phone, so I deleted one. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So um, why don't we go ahead and get started? So um, we always start off our meetings with the meaning of holistic health. And so for those of you who don't know what holistic means, it simply means wholeness and wellness in every part or every aspect of our being. That's mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, socially, and financially. Because if any part of our being is out of balance, it can create instability to our overall well being and negatively impact our health and also weaken our immune system. So when we think of our immune system, we want to think about it in a holistic way that every part of our wellness uh, influences the other part. So uh, we are a whole being and we should. We shouldn't be thought of as an arm at any time. I, always, I cringe every time I hear that. We want to get those vaccines in, in every arm. I'm not an arm. I'm a whole person. So always think of yourself as a whole person, okay? Um, so that's what uh, holistic wellness means. So for our learning objectives today, the first thing we want to do is understand how the immune system works. And uh, we want to understand what natural immunity means versus vaccine immunity, understand what the difference is, and then learn alternative ways to optimize our immune system using an all natural holistic approach. So, um, after, as I said, um, we'd love to meet you and hear your thoughts on, on what you think uh, about everything that we've talked about and what your experiences have been so far. All right, so let's start with what the immune system is. So we could define it as a complex network of cells and tissues and organs that are perfectly designed by God to work together to help the body fight infections and other diseases, okay? Um, we have the lymphatic system, which is composed of primary lymphoid organs like the bone marrow, um, the thymus gland uh, is the first uh, essential gland that we're, we're uh, born with and it kind of dissolves itself over time with age, but those are the organs that um, actually uh, produce the lymphocytes, which are the white blood cells that are used to uh, fight off infection. And then we have secondary lymphoid organs that include the lymph nodes, the spleen, uh, tonsils, uh, mucous membranes in our body, starting with our nasal passages. Uh, we have a protective mechanism uh, right when, as we're breathing, um, the mucous membranes in our nasal passages help protect us to uh, fight off infection as well, um, or foreign bodies. So, um, but if you also think of the bowel, the bowel plays a very central role in defending the body against germs. So you'll notice that when you do uh, have an infection or uh, become ill, uh, you may be nauseated or vomiting or have diarrhea because your bowel is working to get rid of it and it will expel whatever foreign things that you've ingested, you know, things like that. So um, all of the different uh, organs there are do the actual job of fighting off germs and foreign substances that potentially could do us harm. 
So again, all of these systems work together in harmony to protect us from infection. So we actually have a very powerful immune system. It's a, we have our own army of, of uh, fighter cells and, and uh, we could put it in two parts. Um, the first part is the innate immune system. And that's the system that we're born with. It's our body's first line of defense against germs entering the body. So um, it responds in the same way to all germs and foreign substances. It's very nonspecific and um, it acts very quickly. So for instance, um, it makes sure that any bacteria that have entered the skin through a small wound or something like that, it'll detect it. It'll destroy it right on the spot within a few hours. That's the innate immune system, but it has limited power to stop germs from spreading. So in that case, we have the um, adaptive immune system, which, um, it over, takes over if the innate immune system is not able to actually to destroy the germs. And it's very specific. It will specifically target the type of germ that's causing the infection. And what it does is like, let's say it's COVID, for example, it'll identify it as COVID. And then the adaptive immune system will take a little longer to respond. But when it does respond, it's very accurate. And it's, so it's gonna identify it, flag it as COVID and remember it. it, has a memory system. So it knows that the next time that germ enters into the body that it's going to respond very quickly. It's gonna react immediately. Where in the second time, you may not even notice that you even have it or you may have very mild symptoms, but your body will actually be immune to it because that's what this the body does. That's what the immune system does. That's its job. Okay. So it has um, it's antibody mediated through B cells. That's called the humoral part of the um, uh, system, and then T cells. Uh, and what they do is they'll actually uh, induce apoptosis, which means that it will cause a a foreign body to actually kill itself, commit suicide and, and, and explode, you know? So, uh, it, you know, we have, um, it's, it's just amazing when you think about the immune system and its power. And, and so I, I don't know why we don't wanna trust our bodies to do what, what they, they naturally should do. So we, what we need to do is support that system, support our natural way of defending ourselves. And um, you know we don't have to do it with drugs. We don't have to do it with foreign substances. Um, we can uh, do it naturally. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, all right? So what is natural immunity versus vaccine immunity? So um, if in fact, we do contract the SARS, it's called SARS-CoV-2. Um, and um, what our body will do is exactly what I just explained to you. It's gonna try and fight it off. It's gonna tag it. It's gonna identify it as COVID. And then it's gonna build antibodies to fight it off so that if you ever become uh, exposed to it again, you're gonna be immune to it. Your immune cells will kick in, identify it immediately, and you may not even notice that you have it. That's with a natural infection that if you're exposed to it, all right? So all these people who have had COVID now have natural immunity because they were exposed to it. They did develop an infection. And so it really depends also on the number of particles that you're exposed to. Like, you know, um, smaller number of particles won't even cause an infection. But if you actually became ill and you were sick from it, um, you would develop natural immunity. Now, the difference with the COVID vaccine is it can take you to the same place as your natural immunity. So, you know, just, you know which one is better? We can't really say now, can we? Because 
we haven't had this COVID vaccine long enough to know what the long-term effects are, how long the immunity is going to last. We know what they're telling us, but the proof will be in the pudding, you know, uh, down the road uh, years from now, or when they say, well, it didn't last, it doesn't last, and you're going to need to take a booster shot. So maybe you'll need to take a shot every year. We don't know. So, um, but either way, you can get to immunity is the point that I'm trying to make here. So when you look at the vaccine, so I look at it as, as having two choices. We can decide that we're going to um, do all the things that we're gonna talk about today to maintain a healthy immune system so that if we do get it, we'll fight it off without being hospitalized, without dying from it, without um, having any major illness because we have a healthy immune system. And um, so we could do that and develop our own immunity naturally. And then, but of course, we're gonna do everything that we can to prevent ourselves from getting it in the first place by still doing the social distancing, the mask and the frequent hand washing. Then on the other hand, for people who decide that they're gonna take the vaccine to develop the immunity, um, then um, you, you have, um, you know, it's your choice. Um, however, you should know that there are three different types of vaccines out there. Typically, you won't know which one you're getting, or I guess they'll tell you, but um, you know, each one is different. And, um, and they're still undergoing large scale uh, phase three clinical trials. Um, and uh, so there's still a lot of experimentation going on, even though it's, you know, it's in the media and, and all of the, the doctors and, and the, the um, movie stars and everybody that they're using to promote the vaccine or saying that it's safe, but we really won't know that over time we will know. So um, in the beginning, you have to think, all right, so these, all of these are still going through trials. You've got the mRNA vaccine, which is a, um, supposedly is harmless, and it actually uh, contains material from the virus that causes COVID uh, and gives the cells instructions on how to make the virus, but make it harmless, okay? Uh, then you have another type, which is called a protein subunit vaccine, which is more similar to other vaccines, which in there is, instead of the entire germ of the COVID uh, being injected into you, it's uh, a very small particles of it uh, so that it doesn't cause uh, infection, um, but it will elicit an immune response. And then there's vector vaccines that contain modified versions of a different virus that's similar to COVID. So you've got all of this kind of uh, go, everything going on in the background that you don't know about that's actually, and you really don't know what other nanoparticles are actually included with those vaccines and what those long-term effects are. But all you have to do is go to the CDC and read about all of the other vaccines that have been out there and what that, uh, what the adverse effects of those were and how many people died before they got it right. So um, you're taking a chance, uh, but it's a chance that is your choice to take. And now, um, but I just want you to know that, um, I'm just gonna say it like my, my dad used to tell me, is to be your own woman and make your own decisions. Don't let anybody try to make you force you into doing anything, okay, that you are not comfortable with, but just feel pressured to do because, oh, I'm not going to be able to fly, or I'm going to need a passport that says I'm vaccinated, you know, I'm not worried about any of that stuff, all right, what I'm going to do is do everything in my power to keep my immune system healthy, and be able to fight off the virus if I do contract it, but try to prevent myself from getting it in the first place, okay? So um, I hope that that's clear. And if you have any questions or comments about that, again, please put it um, in the uh, 
comment section. But I do want to also point out about the CDC. So um, this is just a snapshot. This is, I think this is was updated March the 24th. So it's pretty recent, even though I know the deaths have gone up since then. But if you really look at the number of cases versus the number of deaths in the United States, um, you'll see that there are, uh, as of March 24th, there were 29,769,325 cases of COVID, all right? And out of that, there were 541,289 deaths, all right? So when you think of it that way, and look at, and so what I did was I just pulled out my calculator and I said, okay, what percentage of people actually die from COVID if they contract it or even become very ill where they have to be in the hospital? And when you look at the number, it's still very small. It comes to like 1.8%. Um, of the total cases, because most people will survive it. Most people have survived it. Um, many people don't even have symptoms. You know, they're asymptomatic or they get it. And, and so what? It's because they have a healthy immune system and their immune system did what it was supposed to do. All right. And maybe uh, and, the, and the people who are dying, they're dying for several reasons, but, you know, which we won't go into that because we don't have all the facts, but we know that as Black people, we are not treated the same uh, when we go into the hospital as other people are. So that's another factor that we have to take into consideration. So, um, when you look at now, let's take that same number, that 29,769,000 cases. Now let's look at the entire population. The entire population of the United States is what, 331 million people? So now when you look at that and you say, all right, Let's take that number and see how many deaths that is. That's still a very small amount of people uh, when it comes to um, actually even getting the virus because that's, it's like less, it's about 0.6%, all right? So I just wanted to give you a different perspective in, in looking at that um, and looking at the data. So the, the bottom line is that uh, vaccines cannot replace a naturally healthy immune system. Having a naturally healthy immune system is the best thing that you can do to protect yourself from COVID, protect yourself from becoming deathly ill from it, all right? So those are the things that nobody says. Everybody, you know, when you turn on the, the news, you, you, turn, you listen to all these people that are promoting the vaccine, who's promoting health? Who's promoting natural immunity? Is anybody teaching you that? Very few, all right? So, but that's what we're here for today, all right? So um, again, for me, I say no to alcohol, I say no to drugs, and I say no to vaccines, all right? But of course, again, it's your choice now. So what is a holistic, what's a holistic natural approach to immunity? Um, number one is we're gonna talk about the foods that we eat. That's most important. Uh, eating plant-based immune boosting foods. We're gonna talk about what those are, what the supplements are, what herbal supplements are, what the uh, oils are, Denise is gonna talk about. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about everything that we should be doing, what we should be putting in our mouths during this time and what we shouldn't be putting in our mouths. And then we're gonna talk about fasting and uh, how it helps build the immune system. And uh, we'll talk about that and, and practicing conscious eating. We'll also talk about practicing good hygiene and preventing spread as well as getting enough rest and minimizing stress. All of these things, if you're under a high stress level, if you're not getting enough rest, if you're um, not eating the right foods, eating too often, uh, eating all at the wrong times, all times of the day and night, um, 
you're going to weaken your immune system. And when you do catch COVID, then you're going to get a lot sicker than the person who's doing the right thing. All right, makes sense? So the first food that I want to point out, which has right in your kitchen that everybody has in their kitchen is onions and garlic. So what I would recommend is that if you feel like you have a symptom, even if it's just a cold, uh, if it's any kind of respiratory symptom, whether you think it's COVID, the very first sign that you feel um, something's wrong, whether it's a, a scratchy throat, a cough, uh, you can't uh, smell or you can't taste, you want to whip yourself up some garlic and onion soup, all right? So this is uh, tried and true, and it's scientifically proven and everything that this works uh, because of the natural antiviral properties that onions and garlic have. It's good to uh, cook with it all the time. And, and to make a soup, uh, you would use um, a full garlic bowl peeled and sliced with a whole. Now, remember, I'm talking organic. You know, nowadays, if you cut an onion, you won't even cry from it anymore because, you know, um, they're, they're not organic. You know, the soil is over overused and you're just not getting the full benefit of an onion anymore because, it, you know, before, as soon as you cut it, you start crying immediately nowadays. So you got to find organic onions and uh, organic garlic to get the best benefit from it. And then I used uh, organic vegetable cubes that don't have any MSG poison in it or anything like that. So you want to make sure that your vegetable, and you can't find the, I, I love, I have one that I love, but uh, if you can't find that, you can use a vegetable broth organic um, versus using the cups, the four cups of water. And um, then you can add dried herbs, thyme or fresh, thyme, basil, bay leaf. And you put all the ingredients into the water and, and, and boil it until your onions look nice and caramelized like that picture there. And then you can garnish it. So I would make four cups and um, drink two. Um, as soon as I start feeling sick, drink those two and then drink it the rest of it before I go to bed or before at, in the evening time, all right? So, um, and you'll wake up feeling a lot better. You And then if you don't do it again the next day, keep doing it, all right? Another thing that you can do is, um, we're gonna talk about these as supplements, but it's better to eat your nutrients than it is to depend on supplements. But again, because of, uh, the um, over fertilization or, or under fertilization of the soil and it not having the fruits and vegetables not having the, the nutrients that it should. Uh, so it's good to eat it and take the supplement. I do both. All right. So we're going to talk about what foods are uh, rich in vitamin A and with carotenoids and what they do, vitamin C with flavonoids. Uh, vitamin D3, zinc, and the B vitamins. If you are under a lot of stress and, you know, the B vitamins will help calm uh, and minimize your stress. It calms the, the um, nervous system. All right, so let's talk about each one of these, starting with vitamin A with carotenoids. So the carotenoids are the phytonutrients that give the food the natural um, color, um, the bright oranges and yellow colors. Um, and they are extremely good for your immune system. And they're also good for uh, eye health. Uh, so vitamin A is a fat soluble um, vitamin. So you're not going to lose it so fast in your urine. So to eat um, a wide variety of, you know, uh, butternut squash and carrots and spinach and apricots, cantaloupe, melons, you know, these are good uh, vitamin A rich foods that have lots of carotenoids uh, that are good for immune health. So, but again, 
if you want to eat those foods and then uh, I can help you because that's what I do. Um, I can, you know, you could um, see me and I could set you up where, because when you go to CVS and Walgreens and, you know, you're not, you're getting substandard uh, vitamins there. Um, so you're not getting the best nutrients because they're commercialized, you know? And so, but uh, there are, you um, uh, brands that are uh, reliable and dependable for making sure that your the nutrients are are vegan sourced and that they have what they uh, what they say they have in them. So you you want to make sure that you're getting a good source uh, when you are seeking out supplements. Uh, vitamin C, everybody knows about vitamin C. Um, you, uh, you can even go in the hospital now, even if you have cancer, they'll give you an, an IV uh, with vitamin C in it because of its powerful immune fighting and natural killer cells that even kill uh, uh, cancer cells. So um, vitamin C is very important and it's not just in oranges. Do you know that an orange, a medium orange has like 70 milligrams of vitamin C, but uh, bell peppers, for example, the red ones especially, they have 152 milligrams of vitamin C. Chili peppers are high in vitamin C, broccoli, strawberries, kiwi, pineapple. So it's not like you're just limited to drinking orange juice that has sugar in it. You want to you know, eat your oranges, juice your own oranges and um, get your vitamin C. With flavonoids, um, if you're gonna use a supplement, you want a vitamin C supplement with flavonoids because that um, has, it's high in antioxidants and helps to fight off free radicals and scavengers in your body. So um, that's number two, all right? So vitamin A, Vitamin C, I'm not talking about in a multivitamin that has not even enough of uh, milligrams in it. Um, so you have this, uh, take these separately, all right? And take the right amount, which I can help you with as well. Um, now, another thing that I love to do, and I do it as often as I can, is juice. Um, I'll juice my vitamin A and C with ginger. Ginger is a very, very powerful um, cleanser of the blood. It actually is works like, and, and I like to use a, a large piece of it, and um, it has a kick that you can just feel it uh, cleaning your, your, your system. So um, it's very good to juice with your vitamin A and C that you find in apples and carrots and oranges. And um, there's nothing better than fresh juicing. If you're gonna drink juice, don't buy the juice from the store, juice it fresh or eat it fresh, okay? And then your vitamin D, of course, you want to get out in the sun. Now that the weather is warming up, you want to get your vitamin D uh, from the sun. So if you look at this diagram right here, you can see that your skin absorbs the UV rays from the sun and it converts uh, it into uh, uh, through the liver and through the kidney, it converts it into a metabolically active form of, of vitamin D. So most of us have low vitamin D levels. Uh, the normal level should be between 51 and 70 nanograms. But most of us, if you were to get your, see now remember vitamin D is not a, um, a routine lab. You have to ask your doctor, please let take my vitamin D level so I can see what it is so that you know exactly how much vitamin D you should be taking. Um, but if you're sick, you could start anywhere between 4,000 and 5,000 uh, IUs to, uh, to boost your immune system. All right. Now you can also eat your vitamin D. The best sources of vitamin D are in salmon uh, and cod liver oil, for example. You can see the uh, 
percentages per serving there. Trout is also high in vitamin D. Uh, but if you don't eat fish or eat meat and you're a vegetarian um, then or vegan, um, you can get it from mushrooms, um, uh, fortified uh, D milk. It doesn't have to be uh, cow's milk. Uh, you can get it uh, fortified milk in other forms, uh, soy, almond, oat milks, things like that. Um, Fortified cereals, uh, sardines, uh, and even eggs have some vitamin D in them, right? But again, uh, I would say eat it and supplement it during this time of COVID. Um, then zinc is your other important nutrient that you want to get into your diet and also supplement. You can supplement with like 15 milligrams of zinc. Uh, 15 to 30. Um, you get it from uh, hemp seeds, oats, lentils, love lentils. You eat lentils all the time. Um, very good source of zinc. And um, so, and, and everything else you see here, chickpeas, quinoa, and uh, pumpkin seeds. All right. And then last but not least, your vitamin B, your stress vitamins. They're called the stress vitamins because of the impact that they have on the nervous system. So um, there's eight different vitamin Bs. Vitamin B1 is thiamine, B2, riboflavin, B3, niacin, five is panthoic, um, panthothenic acid, pyroxidine is six, biotin is seven, B9 is your folate and folic acid and B12. So uh, it's best that um, you want to eat your vitamin B, which you'll find in uh, spinach, uh, mushrooms have a lot of vitamin B, um, um, oatmeal, avocados, tomatoes, uh, sunflower seeds, bananas, uh, beans. So you can get a variety of the different vitamin Bs uh, in those foods. However, uh, you can supplement with a good vitamin B complex that has a little bit of all of the vitamin, the B vitamins in it. And so, and I can help you with that too, recommending a good vitamin B complex, all right? Now, the next thing is you can use herbal support as well to boost your immune system. So uh, just prophylactically, I take uh, elderberry every day. Um, it, you know, you can get Sambuscus elderberry just about anywhere now. You can drink elderberry juice, um, but it comes in gummies and um, you, it comes in a syrup. So if you are feeling yourself, now remember, these interventions are best um, prophylactically or to help prevent getting sick or once you are uh, feeling sick, as soon as you start feeling sick, do it immediately, okay? So um, like if you have a sore throat, drink the syrup uh, that night. Uh, so always have these things on hand if you're not taking them every day. Uh, astragalus root is very good for the immune system as well. You also have um, echinacea and golden seal, baptisia and lomidium. Now, I don't know if I said that one right, lomidium. Uh, so those you can use, they can be used synergistically with each other. Like you can uh, like say, for example, wise women er uh, herbs, they come in tinctures and you know they'll have golden seal with echinacea mixed in or baptisia. So you can get different combinations where you're not having to take these separately or you can take them separately. So um, now Denise is gonna talk about the oils. Uh, there's several oils that you can use as well, but I'm just, uh, uh, these are the primary ones that you want to use uh, herbals that you can try, all right? Um, and, and it's good to just always have them on hand. Um, uh, for me, uh, I always have the echinacea and golden seal on hand, 
all right, with the elderberry. And I always have the oil. So we'll talk about that later. All right. Now, the other thing, now we know what to eat. Now we have to know what not to eat. It's so much, it's so important. It's just as important as what to eat, all right? So if you're gonna eat all the right foods that we talked about and then turn around and then go to Dunkin' Donuts and get two donuts in the morning and you know uh, try to eat healthy in the afternoon <laughs> and then eat some processed food for dinner, um, you know, pizza and, and uh, French fries and everything else, uh, then you're just defeating the whole purpose of what you're doing. So I think it's even more important <laughs> to cut these junk foods out of our diets. That's what our main problem is. We're junk food eaters. And um, so it weakens the immune system. Sugar, refined sugar weakens the immune system, all right? So you want to avoid it. And you can tell right away, just like with dairy, if you have a, if you're having a respiratory issues, or if you have COVID and you have respiratory symptoms, you definitely don't want to eat sugar and you definitely don't want to eat dairy because dairy causes more mucus in the body. All right. So those are the things you want to just take it out, stop it, especially if you're sick, you're just making yourself worse when you do these things. All right. And then you want to practice conscious eating. You know, I'm number one fault at this. I eat too fast. I always eat too fast. And I have to, when, when I pray before I eat, you know, I, I have to pray to slow down. Please let me um, be conscious of my, of my eating and, and not swallow my food before I thoroughly chew it up and digest it in my mouth. <laughs> Please let me take the time to chew my food, at least 30 chews, okay, before I swallow, um, you know, and, and to do that, you have to put your fork down. You can't have your fork in your hand and before you can swallow, you don't get enough. So you want to put your fork down, relax, put your phone away, don't have the television on as a distraction, practice conscious eating and uh, so that you can digest all the nutrients and absorb them. If you're eating in big chunks, then you can't even digest it and you can't absorb it. So don't multitask and then also be good at, which I'm learning to do more and more. Um, my mom is really doing it well. She, you know, when, when you feel like you're full, it doesn't matter whether you've got a whole half a plate or more left on your plate, food left on your plate. Don't eat it, put it in the refrigerator, put up the food and leave it for tomorrow. You don't have to eat it. It's, there's no such thing as you have to clean your plate anymore like we were taught when we were younger, right? So <laughs> don't overeat, that's number one. Stop eating once you're full. You know when you're full, if you're listening to your body, the body will tell you everything you need to know. And then the other thing is uh, fasting. Now, if you haven't read How to Eat to Live by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I think you should. Um, it, it gives you so much information on everything. Everything about food that you wanna know is in there. But it, when it comes to fasting, uh, he teaches us to eat one meal a day and to fast for three days at the end of every month for a healthy immune system. He says that if we were to do that, if we were to eat the right foods at the right time and fast on a regular basis, he said we wouldn't be sick not one day in our lives. We wouldn't have diabetes, we wouldn't have high blood pressure, we wouldn't we would be healthy. So, um where I I definitely believe in this and I don't, you know, there's another paradigm that says, oh, eat, don't let yourself get hungry, eat every two hours, and then, then wake up in the middle of the night and eat in the middle of the night if you're hungry. No, that's not the way. Read How to Eat to Live to get a different, um, uh, uh, to, to understand there's a different way, all right? So um, we're all learning every day. We don't know everything. 
we have to keep our minds open and we have to be ready and able to receive and take in more information, all right? So if you feel like you know it all already and you don't need to read any books, then, you know, that's your prerogative as well. But, um, the ex other thing we wanna do is exercise regularly. And I, I'm gonna go a little bit faster because I wanna give Denise enough time. Um, so uh, we want to make sure that whatever it is that we're doing is something that we should love to do. Not something that, oh no, I don't wanna do it, you know, and you won't do it. And you'll start and then you'll stop. And so you have to find something that you enjoy doing and do that for at least 30 minutes, at least 30, I'm just talking about minimum, at least 30 minutes for at least three to five times a week. And you will be so much healthier and you'll feel so much better. Exercise releases endorphins in the body. It feel good uh, uh, hormones that uh, are act as pain relievers and everything. So exercise is key. Um, so I just say, do what you love. Now for me, I love, I have a beautiful park. I, uh, uh, I went out in the parking video myself one time and shared it uh, with the group, but uh, it's a beautiful park and uh, I love to go out there on a sunny day and get my vitamin D and breathe in fresh oxygen from the trees. And, uh, and it's a wonderful, peaceful walk and I just love it and I do it with my sister. So it's good to have a partner, accountability partner that uh, can uh, help you. Like if we say we're gonna meet at a certain time, you know, I know that nothing's gonna stop her. She's gonna be there and I'm gonna be there and we're gonna be on time and we're gonna do what we set out to do. So it just takes planning, plan it into your day. Now, I also love Zumba is my other favorite thing, but since COVID I haven't been going to classes, but Zumba is like the best fun ever for exercise. <laughs> okay, so you do what you love. Um, and then get enough rest. This is the cutest little boy you've ever seen. I just love this picture. <laughs> He's so cute. Um, so, but you know, once you when you put your kids to sleep, then you got to go to sleep too. Okay, so you got to get enough rest in order for your immune system to protect you the way it needs to. If you are overtired and not sleeping well and not getting enough rest, then you're just weakening your immune system and allowing COVID to take over. So we can't do that. We have to do everything in our power to uh, be able to support our immune system to be able to fight it. And so minimizing stress, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Denise. Um, Get a relaxing massage. Um, my sister Mecca, she's on the phone. She does that all the time. She goes and gets a massage on a regular basis. She goes and gets her manicure, her pedicure. Uh, you know, she does all that good stuff. You gotta take. Uh, uh, somebody's not on mute. Uh, somebody. Okay, so uh, you want to take a. Uh, a nice bubble bath, a soothing shower, get a good book, read it, light a candle, which Denise is going to talk about all of the aromatherapy and everything. So I'm going to just turn it over to her now. And I'm going to go on mute while you're talking. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful information. So I am Denise Renee Muhammad, your aromatherapist, and we're going to discuss um, essential oils that can help you take preventative measures with your health um, and help to stimulate and boost the immune system. So you can go to the next slide. Okay, and we're gonna start off by just going over what aromatherapy is. Aromatherapy is a caring, hands-on therapy using aromatic plant extracts or essential oils, which seeks to induce relaxation, increase your energy, and just reduce the effects of stress. We are under so much 
stress, especially now during this pandemic. It's so much going on. People, you know, trying to decide if they need the vaccine or if they don't need it, just all types of pressure. So uh, aromatherapy is a way to reduce the effects of stress and restore that balance back to your mind, your body, and your soul. All right, next slide. So what are essential oils? I'll go over what essential oils are. Um, so for those that may not have used essential oils before, um, essential oils is just that aromatic volatile liquid and volatile actually means that it evaporates easily. So I just wanted to clear that word just in case. <laughs> um, it's a volatile liquid that is within many trees shrubs, flowers, uh, plants, seeds, and the roots, and also in bushes, essential oils, and plant extracts have been used for thousands of years. It originated, um, I read, uh, the Egyptians were the first to actually create the distillation method, um, the, the distillation machines, in order to extract the essential oils from the plants, from the flowers, from the roots and trees. So this, this is not new. We just have to get back to our nature and things that have been kept from us as a people. So essential oils have been used to kill bacteria, viruses, boost your immunity, and just for your overall health and well-being. Um, some, somehow you went on mute or something, Denise? We can't hear you. Next slide. Okay, I can hear you now. I, I couldn't hear you at first. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to um, talk. Of, you can go to the next slide. Okay. Five essential oils that support immune health. All right, so the first oil that we have is oregano. And oregano is known as nature's antibiotic. It's an immune stimulant and a very, very powerful antiviral, antimicrobial essential oil. So that is um, oregano. And I'll go over how to use these as well. Denise, your voice is going out. We can't hear you again. And it's also a great cleansing and antibacterial oil. And then next we have lavender. Lavender essential oil is a relaxant. It's a stress reliever. It inhibits, inhibits the presence and production of cortisol. And cortisol is, <clears throat> excuse me, known as our stress hormone. So it's stress relieving and it also strengthens the immune system. And uh, another one, a wonderful oil that we have is um, orange essential oil. It's also an anti-inflammatory. It serves as a detoxifier. It eases stress and anxiety. Um, it's a natural antidepressant and it also strengthens the immune system. And one point I want to make about orange oil, it has a constituent in it called limonene. It's like 85% of orange oil has this chemical constituent. In limonene, there's tons of research and scientific studies on limonene and how it actually helps to prevent uh, cancer. So that is definitely an essential oil. Uh, with breast cancer and all these types of cancers, you know, running rampant in our community, it's one you definitely want to add to your to holistic toolkit. Um, uh, and it's, it's just wonderful. Eucalyptus essential, last but not least, um, also lowers cortisol levels just from inhaling the essential oil within 22 seconds. 
It um, lowers that stress hormone. It also strengthens your immune system. It's a decongestion and exportant, and it also improves, <clears throat> improves your breathing. So a eucalyptus has an affinity for the respiratory system. All right, next slide. So how to use these essential oils? They can be used aromatically, and that is actually the best way to get the benefits. The most direct benefits is through inhalation because what is it called? Aroma therapy. And with aroma, you have to what? Inhale, you have to smell it. And, and that is powerful because when you inhale the essential oils, it goes directly, uh, it goes through your olfactory system directly to the limbic system of your brain, which is the seat of your emotions. Um, a lot of functions that we have no control over is actually controlled through that limbic system. Um, so this is why it's called aromatherapy, and that is the, um, the best way it immediately has an effect on your mind. Um, you must inhale and smell the essential oil molecules so they pass through your olfactory and directly past the blood-brain barrier. Our brain has like a, a barrier for things that cannot come through and things that are allowed to come through and essential oils is one of those uh, things that is allowed to come through so it directly affects our mind and our limbic system. So they can be inhaled directly from the bottle and you can also put them in a diffuser. And I'm gonna show you my, I have my diffuser running right now. I'm gonna show you, look at that. And I'm diffusing lemon and eucalyptus. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> also, they can be applied topically. Essential oils can be applied topically to the skin with proper dilution. Also, some essential oils can be used internally, but you want to consult with a trained aromatherapist such as myself before doing so. So do not ingest essential oils without consulting with an aromatherapist first, um, because there are some that cannot and should not be ingested like cedar wood, for example. That's one of the essential oils that is distilled from trees and it also has benefits for the immunity as well. Okay, so next slide. All right, and that is my contact information. Um, I do consultations as well to create um, customized blend, aromatherapy blends, and you can follow me on all these social media platforms. And also my business number is 713-482-1624. And I have, um, I actually, there are a lot of essential oils that, that help with the immunity, but I wanted to pick those top five um, and they're fairly inexpensive. So it's, it's easy to get those and to benefit your overall, your holistic health. And that's what I love about aromatherapy is that it interacts with you on all levels at one time without compromising your, your digestive system. So um, in that, that is my presentation. Thank you, Denise. You're that was welcome. wonderful, very helpful information. Thank and, you. Um, I want to say thank you for to everyone for joining. And I'm going to turn the recorder off in just a second. But I want you to know that you can also contact me uh, and make an appointment for a consultation uh, at my website at drveronica.org. Uh, you can sign up for my mailing list and uh, book an appointment for a telehealth consultation if you're interested in learning specifically personalized to you for building your immune system. Consultation. All right. So I'm going to turn this off. One sec. 
Um, if I can find where the control is. There we go. Um, 